Hey everyone, today I'll be inflicting this poor EE injector with the most common problems that people tend to come across. An injector can actually tell you what's wrong with it if you pay close attention to the overflow, and the goal of this video will be to show you how the overflow reacts to various problems. If you find yourself having trouble with an injector in the future, this video will hopefully help you cut down your troubleshooting time. Quick comment before we begin, when troubleshooting an injector, always have the steam valve wide open. Throttling or regulating the steam valve only makes troubleshooting more difficult. Alright, let the torture begin. First, let's just take a look at how the injector functions normally. It should lift and entrain the water pretty quickly, and start injecting as soon as the water valve is adjusted appropriately. Some may not be aware that the water valve needs to be adjusted, so let's just quickly take a look at what a properly functioning overflow looks like when the valve is too restricted. and too wide open. Now we'll take a look at how the injector behaves when it's at the absolute bottom limit of its operating pressure. Everything appears to be normal, but as the water is cut back it turns fairly quickly from a solid stream to a mix of water and steam. Something you can't see in this video is that right before the stream breaks, I can feel a slight hammering feeling in the pipes. This is the injector repeatedly generating and losing pressure in the delivery line, causing a pulsating hammering feeling. The pressure is slowly rising in the video, so eventually once the pressure gets high enough, the injector starts doing its thing. Here's that hammering effect, and this time eventually it was able to open the check valve. When you start to get above the injector's maximum operating pressure, you will notice it start to drip. It is still injecting, but with some waste, no matter how you adjust the water valve. One of the most common problems is leaks in the water line. Here I've loosened the fitting into the water valve to simulate that. This is sort of a worst case scenario. Notice it sounds like the injector is trying to start, but the overflow is still leaking, and there is a gurgling sound. When the water valve is restricted further, the steam, air, and water that sputter are doing so in a pulse. This pulsation is very indicative of an air leak. We'll try it again with the fitting tightened a little bit more. And it works a little bit better, but it still drips. And it still has that pulsating sputter when the water is regulated too far. A closed check valve or shutoff valve isn't too common of a problem, but it's important to see how this behaves in contrast to some of the upcoming problems. Notice how the overflow goes from gushing water to a quick vibrating hammering sound to a smoother flow to a steam and water mix. The vibrating hammering sound is the injector trying to force, and the overflow smooths out as the water supply starts getting a little too lean. A clogged delivery cone is by far the most common problem. A little piece of coal or shaving from the boiler makes its way into the injector and gets stuck in the small converging taper. You'll see right away the injector's ability to lift is pretty sluggish. This isn't always the case depending on how deep the debris is stuck, but it's a dead giveaway that there's something in there. The overflow behaves similarly to the closed check valve, but notice there's no vibrating hammering stage or even a smoothing out stage. The overflow just goes from a relatively gentle flow directly to a steam and water mix. Also, there's no gurgling like we observed with the air leak. If the obstruction is smaller and pretty deep in the nozzle, it may still lift really promptly, but how the overflow behaves after is the ultimate giveaway.
A stuck washer has symptoms similar to an air leak. We can simulate this by simply removing the washer. So if you forget to put the washer back in after cleaning, this is also what you'll observe. Truthfully, it's very hard to distinguish between a stuck washer and an air leak based on the overflow. However, the frozen washer will not make that airy gurgling sound. It will splutter steam and water very rapidly, which can look and sound deceptively close to the air leak's gurgle, but it will not pulsate as violently, if at all, when the water valve is restricted. It may occasionally even give you some hope that it wants to pick up. Steam nozzles tend to go missing during the process of installing or cleaning an injector. It's an increasingly common problem as more injectors make their way into the wild world of miniature railroading. So I'll remove the steam nozzle so you can see what happens. Basically just lots and lots of steam. Dry steam out the overflow, dry steam back to the water supply, and much more steam than usual coming out the overflow when the water valve is shut. If your delivery cone is really packed full of stuff, you may get something similar to this, but you still won't get nearly as much steam coming out the overflow as you see here. A clogged steam nozzle isn't too common, but I've seen it happen, especially with new boilers. Loose shavings in the boiler, turret, and fittings find their way into the steam pipe and get trapped in the steam nozzle. The injector may seem lethargic, like, well, it's just simply not getting enough steam. Now I'm slowly shutting the steam valve to try to emulate this next problem. If your steam valve is not open wide enough or is just too small for your injector, you will certainly have a bad time figuring out what's wrong. The symptoms here are actually quite similar to when I closed the boiler shutoff valve, but notice the vibrating and hammering sound is much weaker, and as the valve is slowly closed, the overflow does not smooth out before fully breaking. Now I'm adding the hot overflow water to my water bucket to show what happens when your black tinder has maybe been sitting in the sun a little too long. Here the symptoms are again similar, but there are still some key differences. There's no vibration or hammering of any kind, and the overflow is pretty uniform throughout the entire range of adjustment until it finally breaks. This may sound crazy, but if you're planning on running on a hot day, putting some ice in your tender can help keep your injector working. Once the water temperature gets to 90 degrees, you may start to notice a drop in performance, and once you get above maybe 110, you're going to have some serious problems. I hope this video helps with your future injector troubleshooting. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Thanks for watching.